Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another session of our tutorial about AutoCAD. Uh, today, we're going to have a short session about dynamic stirs. By learning this technique, you can basically do anything that you want when you're working on your stairs. For example, you can click on this grip here and align your stairs wherever you want, like any wall with any angle, and you can actually stretch it as well, or you can symmetrize it. You can control the number of your steps, your treads. And as I said, you can basically do anything that you want with your stairs when you learn this technique, this dynamic stairs that we are going to talk about in this, uh, in today's session, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go ahead and start our work. Let's see how we can create dynamic stairs. Okay, to start our work, we need to open up a new file, then type down UN to check our units. And as you can see, the precision is on two decimal and the unit is metric, okay? Then after that, before we start drawing, we need to deactivate dynamic input. Now activate rectangle command. Then we're gonna start drawing from 0.0, .0 so let's type it down. Now we can activate dynamic input. We want a 1.20 by 1.20 standing, okay? Now Z enter, E enter to put the square in your viewport. Now we're going to start putting the threads. The dimensions are first 1.20 and minus 0.3. Okay. And this is my thread. Now for the nosing, we need some kind of a hidden line or dashed line. So in snap mode, we need to activate, deactivate nearest, I'm sorry. And we're going to draw another line above this one. And there should be a 3cm gap between these two. Now we need to change the line type here. Okay. So up here, click on others. Then in line type manager, let's find, for example, hidden, hidden two. Oh, we have this already, so we can just select it. Then select your line and set the hidden type, but it didn't change. Why? Because we need to change the scale. For example, 0 0.01. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Now select your line and copy it here. All right, so this is a general shape of a stir, a standing, a tread, and a nosing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the dynamic block window to set all of those parameters on our object. But first, we need to turn this to a block. Okay, so in here, uh, for the name, we can write down dynamic stairs. Select your pick point. And okay. Now in block editor, we can add the parameters that we want. Uh, what were they? For example, we want our object to be stretched from this side. Or down here, we want to control the number of the threads. Or we want our object to be mirrored uh, based on both X and Y course. So let's start first in parameter. Select linear. First click. Second. This would be my distance. Then again, linear. First click. Second. This is the second distance. Again, linear, click, and another one. And this is my third distance. Now I have three parameters here and I need three actions. Before that, let's select all the parameters. Press Ctrl 1 and in properties window here. And put all the grips on one. Because as we said in previous session, we want our object to be stretched from one side. And the actions would be set on the grips as well. So it is better to do this to prevent any kind of malfunction. 
Okay, now let's start setting the actions. What is the first one? Well, we said we want our object to be stretched in X course to the right. So select stretch, then select your parameter. And after that, select your, uh, your base point. Then select a boundary of your stretching. And after that, select the boundary itself. All right. And the stretch command is now activated and you can use it. All right. Now close block editor, save. Let's test our action. As you can see, we can easily stretch our standing and the threads all together. All right. Let's go back to block editor. All right, now that we got familiar with the process, we can add any parameter and action that we think uh, might be useful in our work. For example, let's say other than stretching our object, we want our object to be, uh, you can say, symmetrized based on a 90 degree angle or 90 degree axis. Which command should I use? I should use flip. So first select the flip parameter and the first uh, axis that we need for this command is this diameter. This was 90 degree angled, but we want another axis to symmetrize the object completely. Okay, for the first flip, we want to find a point uh, around here. So right click, mid between two points, between these points, for example. And this would be our uh, parameter line. And we can put our parameter here. So this is the first flip. Now, uh, let's see how the next one works. Again, select flip. And this time, let's find another point to draw an axis. We want a middle point between these points. Okay, and we can add the parameter here. Let me just uh, move this a little bit to the center. Okay. Now that we are done with this command, we want to be able to align our stairs from here and here with other objects. So in parameter, select alignment, and we're going to set the parameter on this side length. And now we have our parameter. Again, another one. This time we want it on this side length, so put it here. All right, these were some important parameters that we can put in standing and we can use in standing part of our stairs. Let's see what we can use in threads. All right, we have put stretch in this side of our stairs. All right, um, okay, we forgot to draw something in our stairs. What? We forgot to draw the direction line. So we need to activate the donut command. The numbers are 0 and 0 0.1. And let's put it here. Then draw a line. Activate polar tracking. Set it in 45 degree angle. Okay. Then mirror this line. And now I have the direction line in my stairs as well and now that these stairs are complete let's continue our work on parameters okay as i was saying we have a stretch action here in this side and we need another one for the direction line and these grips here so in action let's uh, select stretch then uh, as you are familiar with the process select your parameter then a base point, and then your stretch boundary. Then select the parameters that you want to be stretched out. Okay. Enter, and we have our action. And we can stretch our object in this direction as well. Okay, now if you want to test this, let's see what happens actually. Let's see what happens if we stretch our object. Okay, as you can see, if we 
stretch an object, the direction line would move with it and it wouldn't stay in the center. We need to fix this one as well. Let's select our action here, then press Ctrl 1. Then we can put the distance multiple on, uh, let's say, 0.5. This way, if we stretch our object, for example, one meter, the uh, direction line would move half of that, for example, 50 cm. All right, now let's test this again. Let's see if it really works. Close, save. And now if we stretch our object, as you can see, the direction line would stays in the center of our tread. All right, let's go back to block editor and see what other parameters we can add. Again, select stretch, then select this parameter. And after that, select your boundary and all of the parameters here. Enter and the stretch action would be set here. Now again, stretch one more time, then select the parameter then your point, then choose your boundary, then select all the items here, including alignments and the flip, enter and another action here. So again, first action stretches this side of our stairs and the second one stretches all of these items that we have up here. Now we need to do something else. Again, we need to press Ctrl 1 and put this on 0.5. And now both stretching actions here are completed. Now, what other actions do you think we can use here? We can use array on the treads, of course. So in action, we can select array, this time distance three, then select the object, enter. Then for the distance, we can type down 30 cm. Another important point here, select this one, then press control one, open up the properties window here. And in value set, put the distance type on uh, increment, and now it would show me a mark every 30 cm. It's going to divide everything uh, 30 cm by 30 cm. Okay, this command is done as well. Uh, let's see what other thing we can add here. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, we need to include this direction line to the array command. So I need another stretch, this time distance 3. Select the point parameter, choose the boundary, and after that, choose the items, which is the donut and its arrow, enter, and the command is applied. Okay, now up here, we have added the parameters, but we haven't added the actions yet. We need, for example, for the flip, we need mirror. So in action, let's select flip, then select the parameter and then the entire object. And we have mirror. Again, select flip, select parameter, select object, and here we go. Okay, now close block editor, save the change, and let's start testing everything. First, let's stretch our standing to this side. Now let's say we want to add treads. You see? Let's symmetrize it upwards. Can we do that? Yes, we can. What about 90 degree rotation? No problem. And you can create any kind of form, any kind of type of stairs that you want and add these parameters. You can, for example, align the stairs with this wall here. Again, we can stretch it or we can change the number of the threads, symmetrize it or rotate it. Or again, for example, let's say, let's add some more steps. See, 
this is very easy we can get a copy now and put this here for example then align it for example to this exterior wall and again do whatever you want for example change the number of the threads or rotate it however you want and overall you can go through any parameter that you have and use these different types of stairs in your project okay guys we are done with our session the session was about dynamic stairs try to practice them all and uh, try to use them in your project as much as possible they can be very helpful as always guys hope you have enjoyed our session i'll see you in the next one good luck